Hey, what's up, guys? It's me, Doc, from SampleKings.com. we got a lot to do today, so I want to get busy here on this idea of moving files and working with Ableton Live, whether it's 11 or 12, and uh, let's get busy. So look, I got a track I'm working on here, and I got some music going on here. Okay, this is pretty simple stuff going on here, right? Let's stop this off right here at that stop button twice to stop it. And I want to take this file here and I want to bring everything into Ableton Live and sort of modify it or whatever. So I've already saved this file already. Let's close this out of here. I've saved it already. Let me close this off here too. And so I want to make sure I'm saved. But I also want to save it on my desktop for one reason to see if I can actually load it into Ableton Live from the desktop. So I want to go to here and I want to save this as. And so I want to come into here, it is here, but I want to save it to my desktop. So I'll come to here, right? I'm going to click on this right here. And I see desktop right there. So I'll say save it to desktop. That's the name of the project, Hazy. And it's an XPJ file. And it's saved to my desktop, okay? That means the XPJ is saved and also the folder that goes with it. So what I really want to do when I do that sometimes, I want to really come back to here and save as... And then I want to make sure I got a folder for it. So I want to go to desktop. I get a folder. I'll call the folder hazy. And then I'm going to say, okay, do it. And now I got a folder on my desktop. I know where it's going to be at. Next thing I'll do is say, okay, now I want to save it. Let's save it. And now it'll save everything inside that folder. Always a good thing to do. Have a folder when saving your file from an MPC software where you can find it. So next what I want to do, I got this going on. I like that. And I'm going to probably close this out. No, I have to close it out because you cannot run Ableton Live with the MPC if you're going to pull in the MPC software, right? So let's quit this. And once it does, I'm going to go right back into here, down to the bottom here. I'm going to look for my Ableton. So I have 11 and 12. I guess I'll pull up 12. Maybe 11, everybody has 11. So I'll do 11. Some guys haven't already upgraded, so we'll do 11 too. Here's 11. We load up quickly. That's really great. I like that part. And I want to come in here and I want to pull an NPC into this software. So to do this, I need to actually, I want to make sure everything's cool. So I don't want to use one MIDI channel, one MIDI track there. So I'm going to just go to here and sort of like uh, delete this one. I'll probably keep these two audios here. And then I have NPC plugins selected right here and when I come to plugins there are several plugins of course it's VST VST 3 and then we have audio units version 2 so I usually use the version 1 so it has changed since they've improved the software here and so I want to come to here and I can go to Akai and I will see this as MPC so I want to drag this one here select it and once I get outside this now we got a file I can come right to here I'm gonna go to the very top right here and put it right there. Now it will take a little while to load up the MPC plugin right here. And so we're waiting and waiting. Oh, here it is. We got it right down. See it right down here? We got this little thing here. And so we're going to see it next. There it is. There's the software right there. So now we've loaded up the MPC software. This is kind of cool. But what I have to also do is make sure I'm rolling right. So I want to actually go here to live and look at the settings. But I can't see that. I gotta actually close this out, and there it is right behind it. So we got our settings set up here. I'm just making sure that um, the audio input, the outputs, correctly set up. And I also want to make sure here that we have the proper buffer size I want to use for latency and that kind of thing. And I also want to make sure my sample rate is correct, right? So in this case, I believe my sample rate here is going to be 48. And that's high quality. So you can select the quality, normal high quality. I go to high quality. And we're pretty good here with this. I'm on a MacBook Pro, as you can see. MacBook Pro microphone there. And I'm using this uh, Telestream for audio capturing. And I also have the Core Audio, which is always familiar with the Mac. So I'll close this window out. And now what I want to do is sort of like bring the track up to here. I'm going to try and load a track in. Now the problem ends up being sometimes when trying to load a track in that you've already done, it could be from a different person. I have no idea, but I've seen this problem before. So I've got clients who've given me some tracks. I try to load them in. I got a problem with it. So we got one that's on a desktop. 
it loads in automatically. Look, the desktop loads in automatically. So I have that on my desktop, right? Now I'm going to go back into here and I'm going to select, I'm going to select new project. So that means clear it out. I'm going to go back to here again, go to file, and that says recent. Now I'm going to select the one that's actually inside my documents folder. See, there's a problem. MPC project failed to load. So be aware of that. If you're going to save something for your Ableton Live and you want to get Ableton Live to do something with it, save it to your desktop first. That's what I do. And then I can bring it right directly into here rather than bring it from my documents folder inside of my MPC, uh, inside of my MacBook Pro, excuse me. So next, what I want to do, of course, is go right back in here again. I'm going to go to here. We're going to go right up here to uh, load. I'm going to select the one that's on my desktop. Right? So this is Hazel Desktop. And then I go from this over here. Boom. And it loads up right there. Now, what's the tempo? I don't even remember. So I know it's kind of slow. So the tempo is controlled by your Ableton Live. Oh, that's kind of fast. Stop that totally, please. Okay, so I want to make sure the tempo, see, it says 120 there because that's what's going on right here in our Ableton, which is 120 right here. Now, as so I adjust this here, let's say we want to go down to maybe like 90. I'll pop 90 in there, and you'll see here now that it says 90. Press play. You don't like that. So I'll come to here. I'll just drag this up and down, right? Bad. I think this will work. Okay, good. So we'll press stop here. Right up here in our Ableton, right there, and we stop the track. But what we want to do right now, I want to put them on separate freaking tracks, right? So this is going to be different here. Now, in order to do this, I can see that bass drum, this thing, all this stuff here, they're all going to like the main. Let's explain this. Let's close this out. If I want to bring that back, it's right here. Click here, and it's back. All right. So let's close this out. We want to work in Ableton Live. So what I want to do here, you can see this. I'm playing back the track and everything else. But what I want to do is I want to send everything to separate tracks. So I will come to here. I'm going to go to my MPC. Here, I'm going to go to my MPC. I'm going to have more than this. So I can come to here. I'm going to go like Command T. I can keep adding more and more tracks, right? There's 13, and we got 16. We'll try 16 or something. We'll come to here, and we got it going on. So what I want to do next is I want to come to here, and I want to make sure that the ones I have are set up properly. So I want to make sure we're going to go to MPC, right? This is going to be MPC. So all these inputs are going to be just MPC. Okay, so next what I want to do is I want to come over to here and select the tracks output. So inside of MPC software, I can do stereo mono. But you can see here, we cannot do mono on tracks for audio inside of Ableton Live. So it has to be stereo, obviously, right? So I have to have these tracks come out in stereo to place them in a separate channel right here with a fader, right? So what I want to do next is I want to make sure I can hear this back. So I want to go to here to input and I want to bring back up the MPC software. So I want to make sure I go back here to MPC, this first channel and that first track. Then I'm going to go right to here, load it up again. And I want to press these sounds up. But first thing I want to do is like go to here. I'm going to hit the pads so I can see what's going on. See that? That's that one sound right there. And I want to go to three, four here. So that's that MPC one, and I want to send it out to three four. To do this, I will just go into here, and I want to see this track. So here I am. That's it there. I want to close this track out. I want to see it here. It's going to the program. I don't need that, right? I want to say go to here and say I want to send it out to three four. And as I send out the 3-4 here, look at that, it's going right there already. 
And I can do that for every one of these tracks. I come to here. Okay, that's the ones there. I'm gonna send it right here. As I select it, you'll notice here I'm in this pad channel. I can select any pad and we'll see the channel for that pad. I come back here to this one, that's a snare drum. I wanna send that out to five, six. Hit the pad. We don't hear it. You know why? We gotta go in here, right? And we're in there. We don't even hear that. Because we gotta go to output. Five six. So you gotta be ready for this. Now once I've loaded my file from my MP3 one or MC Live 2 or MCX, whatever MC I've got, I've loaded the file back here to my 2.0 software. Uh and this will work with 3.02 once it comes out. You will be able to have these tracks, right? So I got my tracks here. And what I want to do though. As you saw what I was doing inside of Ableton, is to realign this first. So I will first come in here, let's turn this all off first, hitting the stop button two times. I'll come to here first, that's the bass drum, right? I'm not gonna send it to the program, it's send the output directly into three, four. Now remember, one and two is being used by Ableton as a playback, so don't worry about that. So we'll start with three, four. Then we'll come to here, this will be five, six. Go on here, stereo output, and there's five, six. We go to here, that'll be seven, eight. So I'm just making sure everything goes out, each hole properly. And I'm gonna hit this one, this will be nine, 10. This here will be 11, 12. And so on, right? You keep going on until you fill all your suckers up. And this will be 13, 14. And 15, 16. And this will be 17, 18. So I have eight more tracks to go. Now I don't. I have 32 outputs in stereo, so one of them will not be recorded. And you can see here inside of this uh, software, this one here is not being used, which is uh, nine right there is not being used, which is this one here, right? And we know that this one here is gonna be 17, 18. So this will be 19, 20. So always make sure you know what tracks have sounds on them, which ones don't. You wanna make sure this is gonna be 21 here. You wanna make sure you got everything lined up properly. It's gonna be 20. Three. Now I've got this, I'll press save now. Now once I save this thing here, we're saved. And I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna turn this off. I'll quit this right here. Automatically it's quitted out. So now that I've changed over the outputs of these sounds, I wanna load this in first. I'm gonna load in the track I've got here, which is my desktop one here, and it's right here. I load this in, and as I hit this first pad here, I hit that first pad. I want to see what that pad is. I get to here, right? I want to do pull this up here. My pad's right here. I'm going to sort of drag it down a little bit to see what's there. There we go. And you see that's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. This one, of course, is going directly out because we're not using that in the track. We got this one here. As you can see they're already lined up into output. So all I have to really do now is just uh go back into here we'll say i'll just close this out and i just need to make a bunch of audio tracks to go along with this right so i'm gonna come to here and i'm gonna make an audio track or track right there right and so i'll make an audio track i'll come to here uh to make sure this says mpc this is from the order's coming from mpc right it's coming from three four and then turn this on here I'll go back to open the NBC up by selecting my MIDI track. I'll select it right here. And then I'll see that, that bass drum will appear in 3-4 output. See, it's right there. I can adjust my levels later on, but now everything's already lined up. So I can go to here, we'll just close this out again. That's an audio track. Now to make this easier, if I want to do something else and add more tracks, I'll just take this one track here and I'll just duplicate it. I'll duplicate. And do it over and over. I'll press Command D. I got 16 tracks that easy. And now I've got everything lined up here. 
So now once everything is all lined up here, I'm pretty much going to close this out in the back end here. Get this over here like that. Y'all need that at all. And now I can see everything I've got here rolling in my tracks. I can also name the tracks on top. But what I want to do, though, is go right back here to the top here to my first track. And here's my NPC software. I'm going to sort of play it from the top. I think the BPM we had last time was like 84. We'll try 84 here and put that in like that. And I'm going to just press play here. And you see, everything's being recorded. Well, not being recorded, but actually, levels are here. Bring that down a little bit there. But you see, we got all the tracks lined up that easily. Coming from my NPC. I'll press stop. It's in sync, of course. And if I want to record, I can just go from the top and start recording. So here, I'm going to go back to here and record on all these other tracks. Right? So I want to multi-record. That's the arm exclusive. Okay, so arm exclusive preference. Okay, so we go right to here. And now I can record on all these tracks that I want to record upon. So I'm going to do this right now, set this all up. And go to here, and go to here, and go to here. I'm just going to recall these tracks right here. And I can record on all of them. And one more to go, this one right here. Enter, we're going to start from one, and I'm going to just press record. And now we're recording on all these tracks. And that's how it works. So it's pretty simple to do, but this is how you can record from your MPC standalone. Take those files out of there, put them on your computer. Bam! Set the output up. You saw I said to save it. Watch this video over if you can't do that. And also subscribe. You want to learn more? We got more videos coming out every day almost. So check it out because there's a lot of stuff we're going to start doing before the winter time comes. I'll see you in the next video. Any questions, go to samplekings.com and get yourself some lessons. That's right. We teach you online. There's no problem with that. I'll see you in the next video.